the next thing uh, again let me keep drawing parallels between LTI and LTV so that so let us say you are given an LTI system right and I want to find uh, H of you are in the lab I want to find H of J 2 pi f correct uh, what will I do of course in the lab you cannot say give me a complex exponential because it is uh, you know uh, what am I going to do to produce e to the j 2 pi f t. So, what do I do what will you do ok. So, you say ok uh, 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 I will excite this with e cos 2 pi f t correct. Uh, and cos 2 pi f t is nothing but e to the j 2 pi f t plus e to the minus j 2 pi f t by 2 correct and uh, uh, I could also excite it with at least conceptually with sin 2 pi f t and let us call this w i of t and w q of t all right. Uh, so, what will I get here? What is w i of t? sin is e to the j 2 pi f t minus e to the minus j 2 pi f t by 2 j. So, what is w i of t? It is uh, h of it is half of h of j 2 pi f. times e to the j 2 pi f t plus h of minus j 2 pi f times minus j 2 pi f correct. And likewise what comment can we make about w q of t? One over two j h of j two pi f times e to the j two pi f t minus h of minus j two pi f minus j two pi. All right. So, if you have w i and w q uh, what do you think uh, uh, we should do to get h of j 2 pi f? Well, you say uh, you do uh, uh, w i plus j times w q gives you h of j 2 pi f e to the j 2 pi f t very good ok. So, how do I uh, so what is h of j so what is uh, uh, so h of j 2 pi f is nothing but w i of t plus j w q of t times e to the minus j 2 pi f t correct. So, what is the real part of h of j 2 pi f w i of t times cos 
टू पाई एफ टी माइनस और प्लस प्लस डब्ल्यू क्यू ऑफ टी साइन टू पाई एफ टी एंड द इमेजनरी पार्ट ऑफ एच एफ जे टू पाई एफ इज डब्ल्यू आई Is it minus? Uh, should I just make it minus? So mm, cos two pi f t w q. I hope I'm not made an uh, w i. Uh, so plus w q minus w i. Thank you. Sign two pi. right so if you are given a linear system you excite it with uh, cos and sin you get uh, uh, these outputs in steady state right remember all these are steady state uh, uh, refer to the steady state solution and uh, you know uh, you look at this uh, w the uh, the uh, the i output and the q output and this will give you uh, the real part and this gives you the imaginary part and uh, uh, from which you can get magnitude and phase if you so desire Correct. I mean, some of you may argue. I mean, this must be. Uh, this is a really dumb way of doing this. Uh, 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 so, what is a smarter way of doing this? Oh well, yeah. I mean, the the other. Uh, I mean, uh, okay. Before we go to step, I mean, one suggestion was why don't you just simply put a step and then find the step response from which you can get the impulse response and then do the Fourier transform. Right, but uh, uh, you know that seems to be an awful lot of work because you need to actually well, you're finding uh, the frequency response at all frequencies, right? If I'm only interested in the frequency response at one frequency, it seems much easier to uh, do this, right? But I mean, what I'm talking about is even in this setup, do you see some uh, uh, redundancy? Ah, so, what he is saying uh, is that oh well, uh, there is a time invariant system, right? And there is nothing really new that the sine wave is giving you because the, uh, uh, when compared to a cosine, a sine is simply a shifted version. So, I need not have calculated W, I mean, I did not have excited the system with, with uh, a sinusoid and actually record WQ. I could have simply taken w i delayed it by by 90 degrees and that would be my w q right. I mean in other words w q is simply nothing but w i of t minus t d where t d equals 1 over What is the time delay between uh, a sine and a cosine, guys? 1 by 4a. All right. So, uh, so technically speaking, therefore, I mean, uh, 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 this is not strictly necessary. All right. But I mean, uh, 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 we do that. Uh, uh, we could have, for instance, used only the cosine, and this is what you learn in uh, in your basic. Uh, linear systems class right so you excite with a uh, with a cosine uh, or a sine it doesn't matter or uh, and the amplitude of the output sinusoid with respect to the input amplitude gives you the magnitude response and the phase shift between the two sinusoids gives you the the phase response right so that uh, from which you can go and get uh, real and imaginary hmm? okay all right now let's see what happens in the time varying case right so again now you have a time varying system and uh, uh, your task is to find h of j 2 pi f t 
地。All right. The question is, how do we do this? One way is as he suggested. Well, you can. Uh, I mean, now this becomes a lot more painful because you uh, you find h of t comma tau, right? For all t and all tau, which will give you that uh, two-dimensional function from which you can go and compute. H of j two pi f comma t by uh, computing the uh, the Fourier transform, right? But if you are only interested in the response to a sinusoid at f, that seems like an awful lot of work, right? The question is, can we get away by simply? It seems reasonable that if I am only interested in the response at a frequency f, I why do I why should I go through the effort of you know putting impulses all over the place? The impulse has got frequency content across all frequencies, correct? But I'm only interested in the frequency I and mean, the response at f, so you know evidently I don't need to work as hard, right? So just like how we did for the time invariant system, we say okay, let me try and excite. And what do you suggest? We've seen what we did with the time invariant case. Uh, what, by the way, what what is the interpretation of this? What is h of j two pi f comma t? What does that mean in English? It is the the complex gain, right? Uh, which be equi which is equivalent to saying the magnitude uh, gain and the phase shift experienced by a sinusoid as it passes through a time varying system, right? If the system was time invariant, the magnitude would be gained up by a fixed factor, and the phase shift would also be a constant phase shift over time. The phase shift will not change with time. Given that the system's properties are varying with time, it stands to reason that the gain experienced by the sinusoid will change. The, I mean, the magnitude gain will change, and so will the the phase shift. Correct. So, what we are trying to find, therefore, is to find you know this that complex gain as a function of as a function of time when excited with a sinusoid. At f, so what do you suggest we do? I mean, we obviously can't put in e to the j two pi f t and then look at the output. If you're in a lab, the only thing you can do is you either put in a a cosine or a sine uh, or both or whatever. Hmm? So they are taking a q from the time invariant case. If you put in cosine two pi f t, what do you get at the output? Let's call this again w i of t. What will you get at the output? Well, that's easy. So if I put in uh, a cosine, I obtain W. What I call W i. If I put in a sine. I get W Q, and uh, so the what is the only change I need to make to these equations? Pardon? Ah, very good. So basically, all that I need to do is change this to. This is now the gain is varying with time. So this now becomes f comma t. All right, and uh, we go through the same algebra, except that now W i of t plus j W q of t equals h of j two pi f comma t times e to the j two pi f t. All right. And uh, how will this look like? So what what is h of so what is real part of h of j two pi f comma t? 
डब्ल्यू आई कॉस राइट डब्ल्यू क्यू साइन एंड द इमेजनरी पार्ट इज डब्ल्यू क्यू कॉस टू पाई एफ टी माइनस राइट एंड इज दिस सो वॉट यू नोटिस इट इज द सेम थिंग करेक्ट except that earlier when you did this with the time invariant system what you would expect to see when you come when you when you do this is you would expect to see something which was independent of time right now you should expect to see something with which varies with but what you are doing is is the same now can we do uh, can uh, uh, we now say oh well we don't need the sign because uh, uh, the sign is simply a delayed version of the cos we remember that this is a time varying system so the response to a delayed input is not the say will not yield the delayed response right so the sign is a delayed version of the cos but that does not mean that wq will simply be a delayed version of wr 